Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So today I'm going to talk to you about battery mod for the uh, SEMA SO31, the STWE 2012. These are the two main machines for this size category. Now these helicopters are about, you know, 19, 20 inches long. So they're a good size helicopter. Anyway, uh, a YouTube user had asked me about, you know, faster charge time, how do we solve that, longer flight time, you know, and uh, so anyhow, I got some answers. Um, there may be the same type of answers on one of my other videos, but I thought I'd do a video dedicated straight to this. Now, the uh, battery that comes with the SO31 and the SDSWE 2012 is this small little two cell, 1100 milliamp, 7.4 volt, lithium ion battery okay now you can go with a 1500 milliamp two cell lithium ion or you can even go 1300 milliamps 7.4 volt lithium ion the other option is to go lipo now this is a 2200 milliamp turnigy lipo battery okay two cell 30 to 40 c discharge rate which really uh, you've got to watch discharge rates uh, on lipo batteries, especially when you start getting near the full throttle area too. Um, this has been known to damage machines. So you want to keep a lower discharge rate on this kind of a helicopter. So something around the 10 or 15 C discharge rate is going to be absolutely safe for this helicopter without any issues whatsoever. But this is the battery I have as an example here that you can use. You can buy the same um, milliamp size of battery, but at a much lower discharge rate and also physically a little smaller and lighter too. So we're going to go over some weights for you first, just to give you an idea of what you're dealing with for weight classes in these different batteries. Now with the stock battery, we're going to weigh this all in ounces. The stock battery is going to weigh in at 2.423 ounces. A 1300 milliamp two cell is going to be 2.957 ounces. A 1500 milliamp two cell lithium ion is going to weigh in at 3.415 ounces. Now, although physically these things look the same, they're not. Obviously, the weights are different. Okay, and there's more milliamps, therefore there's more weight here. The higher the milliamps you go, the more weight you're going to get into. 2200 milliamp lipo battery, 4.697 ounces. So, I mean, you can pretty much go within those weight categories. However, when it comes to physical size, that's where you need to have some concerns to a degree. If you're not going to run a GoPro camera on this machine at all, what you can do is you can go even right up into this size of a battery, but you're going to have to strap it on underneath with Velcro or tie straps and somehow get it to mount. But then you can forget about putting a GoPro camera on top of that. Also keep in mind the heavier the battery you put onto this helicopter, Yes, it will still get it off the ground. It will still fly, especially if you balance things out properly. And that, you take your balance bar here and go as close as you can into the middles. All right, and make sure it sits as parallel as possible. Okay, so that your front and your back are as, as horizontally planed as, as possible. Um, because you don't want too much down, you don't want too much forward. Otherwise, you're gonna have issues, obviously. Now, the other thing is a battery of this size, you're not fitting that in there and still putting the canopy on. It is not going to happen. Now, this 1300 milliamp or 1500 milliamp battery may still put, be able to put the canopy on. I haven't tried it myself, but you may still be able to do, to do that and put the canopy on. However, you're going to end up with a lot of frontal weight when you do that. Okay, so then you're going to have to recompensate um, probably back at the support area would be about the best place to add in extra weight to recalibrate your balance. You need to make sure this is balanced because if you have too much forward 
it's going to go forward all by itself. So when you do hit forward, it's going to go like this and crash. And then when you go in reverse, it might not even get to reverse to do anything because it's got too much forward weight. So you need to balance the weight out. So even this, you might want to even think about strapping it underneath. Okay. If your intentions are to use a GoPro camera with this helicopter, you can use this battery, the 1500 milliamp. All right, and then balance your weight out here, then put a GoPro on. But your flight time is not going to be any better than the 11 because of all that extra weight. So if you're not using a camera on here, you just want the extra flight time, the 1500 would be a good choice. Try and get as physically small as you can. And like I said, about a 10 or 15 seat discharges is definitely safe. You know, nothing higher than that. Okay. Um, and then this way, the smaller you can get it in there, the more balance it's going to be uh, for you. And you may or may not have to add weight to the back end. Um, and if you do, it won't be very much. Uh, so that's what you got to keep in mind. If you can't get things to balance out right with having the cover on and a battery this size physically, you will have to strap it to the bottom and rebalance out your helicopter. Now, from going from 11 to 1500 milliamps, you're talking 400 milliamps more, which should get you an additional, say, four minutes. Okay, call it 100 milliamps a minute type of thing. You know, that's why they rate these things, you know, around 7 to 10 minutes. It's actually a good flight time, too. You know, and the motors do get a little warm after, you know, almost 10 minutes of flight time. And you really need to cool down those engines before you go slapping another battery in right away. You know, um, now I just stick with the stock batteries myself. I'm fine with the 7 to 10 minute flight time and I'm not running a GoPro and even if I was, I could still do it with a stock battery. But I'd have a couple of minutes less flight time depending on the battery, the, the weight of that particular type of GoPro camera or camera that I'm using. Um, I have to compensate for that in my flight time so that I don't crash, you know, and you know, helicopters, they don't glide. You know, when they shut down, that's it. They drop like stones. Um, now, as far as increasing your, or sorry, decreasing charge time, so charging faster, one charger I would recommend would be this DC4S by Hobby King. It goes from two cell to four cells. So two cell is going to be your 7.4s, three cell is 11.1, four cells is 14 volts. So you've got three different battery types with this charger and it's a balancing charger. So when you hook your, your battery up, you plug it in, reads all cells first at 8.35 in this case. Cell 1 is 417, cell 2 is 418. Okay, so if you have three cell, it's going to be plugged into the three cell connector, four cell, so on. Okay. Now, this charger has no problem charging my 1100 milliamp battery within an hour. Okay, it doesn't take more than that uh, from being depleted. It's an hour, it works fine. Now, part of the reason for that is I bought this plug in unit that powers the charger box. And this thing has an output of 15 volts at 5 amps. So this is going to charge my batteries quicker, especially when I get into higher milliamp batteries. It's still going to charge them at a quicker rate than a cheap junkie charger will. Because the cheap chargers that you get with these helicopters, they take about three hours to charge, which is ridiculous. You know, three hours for a whole seven to ten minutes flight time, that's just utterly ridiculous. So, for about 20 bucks, you can get the box and the power supply for it, plug it into the wall, and charge your battery, and it gets better balancing than those uh, cheap chargers do uh, for the cells. So it helps uh, give you longer battery life and more cycles by being properly balanced all the time. Um, it will stay full and beep at you when it's done charging, which is nice too. Um, you don't get that on cheap chargers. Either a light goes on or a light goes off, depending on the charger version you have with your SO31 or your SCSW2012. This one here, it just says full and goes beep, beep. Okay, so you know it's charged, right? And the same rule applies, even with lithium ion batteries. Babysit them, don't leave the room. Okay, if you really gotta do something, 
surf the internet or something for that hour. Always babysit your batteries. You know, even if you put them in a lipo bag, a uh, fireproof bag would be a very good idea, even when you're babysitting them, because anything can happen. I mean, we've seen it all over YouTube where people have walked away and uh, come back and their house is half burnt down. Why? Because there was a problem with the lipo battery and it exploded during charge cycle. You know, I've never had one of these ion batteries do it to me. I've actually never had any battery blow up on me on a charger. Um, but, you know, there's always a first time, so you don't take chances. But it's a very good quality charger, even though the price is cheap. You know, it is very good. I have no hassles with it. Um, I've had this charger for well over a year now, and I love it. And, uh, you know, whenever it blows up, I'd buy another one, you know. So, it's a good little machine. And I like the fact that I'm not waiting three hours anymore. Now, in three hours, I can charge three of these as opposed to one, you know. And if I really want to, if I'm going to go flying, uh, say even at a field, you know, for the day, if I've got spare batteries like this that I can just pop in and out of my helicopter, because it's really not that difficult, you know, I can charge up a bunch of these batteries, take my helicopter out to the field for the day, you know, and I can fly for an easy half hour on three batteries. And this thing comes with the charger cables um, to hook into a car battery. So as soon as you kill your first battery, let it sit for about 20 minutes or so, and then throw it on the charger. It's going to be charging. you still got two more batteries to go. And I would recommend between flights at least 20 minutes cool down time for the engines uh, between flights when you're changing batteries. Um, just because you don't want to overrun those motors all the time. They are brushed engines, so you know they're only going to put up with so much heat and you're going to start toasting engines. So let them cool down for a good 20 minutes, the same as you would for the battery. Then throw another battery in your heli and go have some more fun for another, you know, 7 to 10 minutes. Now, if you are opting out to go with a higher milliamp capacity battery, of course, get spares of these too. Um, and make sure you got the same end on the battery as what you need for the heli, which is a JST connector which is this particular connector here in my hand. This is a JST plug. Um, so if you do happen to buy a 1500 and it comes with this, um, just simply cut it off and buy yourself some JST connectors too uh, and put JSTs on. But you can get a 1500 milliamp, by the way, with a JST connector, so it's not a big issue. Um, at least that's the way this one came from my Lighthawk Brute. Anyhow, um, so when you go to the 1500 milliamp, now you're gonna get a lot more runtime okay so you're going to get an extra probably four or five minutes of run time um, so that means that much extra time for cool down between switching batteries too um, very important for that cool time period for the battery as well as for your helicopter uh, engine so you don't uh, overheat them and burn them out too soon you know eventually they will die anyway but you know better later than sooner okay um, if there's anything else that you, uh, you know, you want to ask me questions about, especially about these helicopters, I know the SO31s and the SCWV20 calls inside and out. Um, I've done so much work on them, it's crazy. Um, I haven't done a whole lot as far as battery mods go because I'm quite happy with the stock ones. And, uh, you know, I like my helicopters to actually look like helicopters, not something that I buck sheet like a Frankenstein job here. Um, you know, so that's just me. But if you really want that extra play time, you're going to have to do some uh, creative balancing acts depending on the battery that you pick out um, to put inside this thing. And just remember, you do have size constraints. So, you know, even a more powerful battery like this, find something in the same size constraints and then you won't have to worry so much about that weight issue. You know, you may have to add some nose weight instead of, you know, removing weight or adding weight to the back, depending on the battery you go with. And, you know, even Hobby King and a lot of other sites have a ton of choices when it comes to these batteries. Um, and like I said, 10 to 15 C discharge rate, more than adequate uh, for this heli. You don't really want bigger than that anyway. And I would probably say not much more than a 1500 milliamp. Um, but you could go to 2000 if you really wanted to, or 2200, but then you're gonna definitely end up strapping underneath and having to balance out with Velcro, finding the sweet spot, you know, and, uh, but it's up to you on uh, how you wanna modify this thing. So uh, any questions, comments, feel free. Um, as always, I'll do my best to answer them and we'll catch you on the next video.